If you have an older motorhome or a newer camper that you plan on keeping for a while, you'll want to watch this video. The guy who did the work on my camper told me he's one of probably only four people in the country doing this. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I've been camping since the 90s and a full-time RVer for the last four years. I can't wait to share with you this thing that I just learned about. First, I want to thank you for subscribing. You may know that I'm on a mission to hit 100,000 subscribers. So thank you for subscribing and getting me closer. Also, if you stay to the end, I'm going to answer some big questions that I've been getting lately. Well, first, this whole thing started with my window. I had a window that would not open. If you don't know, I have a 2005 Alpha Sia Class A motorhome. I just got it in October, so I've only had it for like four or five months. And the window that wouldn't open was my driver's side window. So when I backed into a campground, someone tried to help me and I couldn't open the window. But also going through tolls, I was in southern Arizona for a while. There's border checks. You know, even if you don't cross the border, they'll have these border checks. And going into states like California, they have agricultural inspections, so I need to be able to open that window. I called a company and I learned that he offers a service that I'd never even heard of, and that is defogging windows. Now, if you have an older motorhome or camper with dual pane windows, those windows are probably fogged, and if they haven't fogged yet, they're going to. I had no idea that there was a way to repair them. I thought, okay, the window's dead. We've just got to buy all new windows. Basically, I'm sitting in my camper, particularly at my office window, and I'm looking at this fog. So what happens is the two panes of glass are separated with a seal. And over time, that seal dries out and allows moisture to get in. And that shows up as condensation and it fogs the window. Sometimes where this glass is, uh, becomes edged, due to the calcium right in between the windows being there for far too long but uh these are cleaning right up you got them just in time now if you wait too long that condensation actually etches itself onto the window it's like the minerals that are in the water and there's no fixing that and then you would need new windows but if you catch it in time it can be fixed and they'll look like brand new windows when it's done you can take your rig into a shop, but most likely if they're defogging the windows, my guy or one of the other three in the country is actually doing the work. We go all over the place. We're always on the road. This is a very specialized thing. So I worked with Jesus at dual pane windows. I know before I started uh, doing this, I didn't really see RVs. I didn't really pay attention to RVs. I didn't know there was all this work involved in there. I wasn't sure at first if I even wanted to get my windows defogged, but since Jesus was driving a good ways to fix the driver's window, I thought, well, let me have him go ahead and do a couple and see how it goes. Some of these four companies in the US have a place where you can take your camper to. In my case, they came out to me and it takes a team of people. We're talking glass and big, so you need to have people that are really careful. A lot of things could go wrong. A uh, glass could break on you and I mean it's not many people know where to buy glass, how to cut glass. And, and you can do all that? Yeah, and I could do all that. Taking the windows out is no easy thing. There's often window dressing in the way, valances, that sort of thing. In my case, I actually have a window valance that is bolted behind a cabinet. So they have to be really careful and know what they're doing when they remove the window. And I have full body paint on the exterior. So you want to find someone who has experience with that so that they don't mess up the paint pulling the windows out. So taking apart the window is no easy thing either. The crew actually used a blow torch to heat the glue up on one end to separate the panes. Now once the glass is separated, they scrape the old seal off, then they clean the windows, put a new seal on, and put it all back together. Again, they're super careful when they reinstall the windows and reinstall the valance and everything like that. Plus, they also need to now seal the window on the exterior. So it's fascinating work. How did you learn how to do this? I first started off with the uh, auto glass company. They wanted to uh, get into the RV industry. They took on a challenge with an RV dealer account. That's when I first got the job. Mm -hmm. And they pretty much used me as the 
there's a guinea pig there to learn the trade and ever since there we, we were just messing around with the frames just learning how to take them apart right how to clean them what to use and it, it worked out for us i enjoyed the work so ever since then i that was seven years ago i just kept at it well i liked it so much that i had him do the rest now this was not part of my plan to even have my windows defogged but i am thrilled my glass is crystal clear i love when i sit at my desk instead of looking through this hazy fog i am now looking through clear glass and the work has a warranty now jesus is full service glass so he actually custom cut a piece of glass to replace my driver's window so the story on that was at some time that window had been replaced and they put in glass that was too thick there was no way anything could be done to the track or smoothing it out or anything to get that window open easier it needed to be replaced and the glass needed to be tempered it needed to be safety glass so jesus did all that and now my window is so easy to open so i'm really glad about that well thanks for watching to the end this is not sponsored i certainly want to help jesus out and get him some business but really i want to share with you because i hadn't heard about this so i figure if i hadn't heard about it then you might not have heard about it either the number one question I get asked a lot is, am I going to get another dog? If you're a longtime viewer, you know that I lost my dog Mango at 14 and a half years of age back in September 2021. So it would be great to have another dog. Mango was so special. He could really could connect with people. He seemed to be joy on four feet, right? I would take him to the University of Kentucky campus and the freshmen would just flock over to him and pet him and talk about how homesick they were. I mean, it seemed like he was doing community service. I mean, he just really brought out the best in people and he was a great connector. So half of Mango's life, I had a home with a yard, so it was so easy to just open the door and let him run. I still took him on daily walks, but I didn't have to do it three times a day, every day. So you know that recently I suffered with broken ribs and COVID. I would hate to have to go through that and have to walk a dog three times a day on top of that. I mean, I wish there was a better solution and maybe down the line it's gonna be the time, but right now, it's just not the time. I'll know when the time is right. And I, I just loved him so much. And I know that I would love another dog as much in a different way. So I'll keep you posted if anything changes. The next big question I get is how's my back doing? You may remember in November 2021, I had back surgery. I had a microdiscectomy. I had a herniated disc and it actually was pushing on my nerve. It was super painful. Well, this surgery was a miracle. I went through Dr. Henderson in Mobile, Alabama, and my back is better than ever. I am so thrilled to be pain-free and also to have gotten just a small incision. If this had been done the traditional way, I would have been opened up and it would have been seven weeks before I could even climb stairs. Well, living in an RV, I don't wanna hear that. In fact, my back is doing so good that I actually, this past week, slept in the back seat of my truck for three nights in a row. And I'm sure you're like, well, what's up with that? Well, I have car camped, but it's been a long, long time. Well, the story is I had two good friends that I was meeting at Joshua Tree National Park. I didn't wanna miss out on that and my rig was in the shop. So I went ahead and slept in the back seat of my truck and I have to say it was great, my back didn't bother me, so I'm glad I could do that. And so that brings me to the next question is, okay, do I still love my rig? And here we hear it's going in the shop, right? I've just had it for a few months, I've been putting a lot of money into it. I did not get an inspection as we talked about in a previous video. Do I regret buying the rig? I really think that I was meant to own this motorhome. I love it. This is camper number nine for me. It works out in every way. I have never found a floor plan like this that is just perfect for me, perfect for my home office, perfect with lots of windows. And I think I need to say more often that when you buy something, particularly when you buy something used, don't spend your entire budget. You need to set aside a cushion because you're gonna to wanna to do renovations, repairs, and upgrades. So I'm so grateful that I got this motorhome at such a good deal. In fact, I tell people, oh, I stole it. I mean, it was such a great price that I had a nice, 
cushion for repairs, renovations, and upgrades. And so now I'm at the repair phase. Stay tuned and I'll keep you posted on these repairs. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Let me know of any video topics or questions in the comments, or just talk about foggy windows. Have you had that done? Would you get that done? I'd love to hear it. As always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.